The Alberta oil sands make some of the most emissions intense crude oil on the planet. It has an average emissions intensity of about 69 kilograms of CO2 per barrel. And much of that emissions intensity is caused by burning natural gas. So I'm going to talk to Jeff Clark, who's the CEO of Acceloware, that has a technology that uses electricity to do the same thing. And they've just launched a commercial demonstration project in Alberta. So welcome to the interview, Jeff. Thanks, Markham. Thanks for having me. Why don't you give us a brief introduction to your uh, technology and the project that you've got going on? Sure. Um, yeah, so basically we've been working on this technology for about 12 years. And essentially what we're trying to do is rather than heat this bitumen and heavy oil by uh, steam, injecting steam that's created by natural gas, as you were mentioning, um, what we're trying to do is heat that bitumen in situ using radio frequency energy. And the best analog I have for that is your microwave oven. For example, uh, you put a cup of water in your microwave oven, you bombard it with radio frequency energy, and the water molecules start to vibrate, heat up, turn to steam. And then we, uh, um, we do that underground. Every uh, heavy oil and oil sands reservoir has water in it. So we're taking the water that's already present. So another added benefit of our technology is no external water use. We, we heat up that uh, water that's already present in the reservoir. That creates steam, uh, essentially doing the same thing. And uh, the added benefit we have here is that we're not producing near as much condensed steam. And uh, therefore, we have much less uh, surface infrastructure that's required. We don't have to generate steam. We don't have to clean up the produced uh, condensed water. And uh, we have a much smaller footprint. So we basically can uh, fire this up with uh, electricity, as you're mentioning. So that opens the door to renewables, um, low greenhouse gas, uh, uh, source of electricity. Um, and, and I guess ultimately what you could do is you could envision uh, um, a zero GHG production uh, technology for heavy oil and oil sands. Now I can, I can already hear the engineers in the audience, Jeff, saying that this will, won't be nearly as efficient and it won't work. So explain the physics of this. Why will this actually be uh, more efficient and the economics be better than the way the industry is currently doing it? Right. So essentially what, what you're getting at there is, is you're saying, okay, well, maybe you're going to use something like uh, natural gas to produce electricity and you're going to use that electricity to, to then heat uh, water. Why not just get rid of the electricity? In, in the meantime, the, the fact of the matter is that when you heat something using um, radio frequency energy and when you're doing it in situ, you have several sources of efficiency gain. First of all, you don't have to produce the steam at surface, pump it downhole, and then produce hot water, all of which uh, uh, has um, losses associated with it. When we produce the radio frequency energy at surface and uh, heat the water, uh, in situ, we have about a 97% um, uh, conversion efficiency between the electricity and the, and the heat that's in the reservoir versus something around 70 or 80% when you think about all of the losses associated with SAG-D. The second source of efficiency there is what we call it volumetric heating, which means that um, once a once a water molecule turns to steam in situ, it stops uh, absorbing any more radio frequency energy. So then the radio frequency energy goes further without loss or very little loss. Whereas in SAG-D, you, you have to pump that steam through that steam chamber anyway and still get, uh, get it to the boundary where it's, uh, where it's producing the oil. So we have uh, much more effic efficiency once we get into the reservoir as well. Now, let's talk about the economics. Uh, my understanding is that uh, this technology could be uh, as economic or more economic, actually lower cost than the current approach with natural gas. Yeah, that's right. We think that we can be um, um, 
more economic, both in terms of capital costs and in terms of operating costs. I'll talk about capital costs first. I talked about before that we don't have to have this huge uh, uh, surface infrastructure associated with producing steam and cleaning up the produced water. So we have, we feel we're going to have about a 50% reduction in capital costs. You can pretty much put everything that we need to produce the oil right on a well pad versus having this uh, uh, huge central processing facility with SAG-D. So we think that there's about a 50% reduction in capital costs. Um, on the operating cost side, we think that um, fuel costs versus electricity costs for us will be similar, but we'll have a substantial reduction in non-fuel operating costs that you have in a SAG-D facility associated with, uh, you know, chemicals, um, uh, generate just everything associated with that steam plant we're going to do away with, um, and we'll, uh, we'll have a 40% reduction in operating costs. That's versus, uh, let's call it the average SAG-D facility um, operating at about a 3.0 steam oil ratio. So obviously, if you have very, very efficient, um, well-oiled SAG-D facilities um, operating at, say, 2.0 uh, steam oil ratio, we might be similar to them in terms of operating costs. Right, but there's a lot of oil, uh, heavy crude produced in Alberta that has a much higher SOR than, than three. So it that's right, like exactly. Right. That's exactly right. And, and I think that one of the things that's interesting about our technology is the very best SAG-D reservoirs, um, um, we, we would be maybe as effective in terms of uh, operating costs. But when you talk about some of these other reservoirs, if they were to come on stream, we would be much, uh, much more efficient and um, cost effective. Now, where uh, will the electricity come from? Uh, like if this was adopted on a large scale, it would obviously uh, use a lot of electricity. How much electricity and where will it come from? Do we need small modular reactors? Can we use wind and solar on site? Um, what's, uh, uh, what's the situation there? It's a really good question because um, one of the things that's really uh, interesting about our technology and not unlike a microwave oven, if I can extend that metaphor, um, you can turn it on and turn it off. It's instantaneous in terms of its heat delivery. So we can, we are much better adapted to intermittent power. We don't have a, a penalty, if, if you will, uh, in shutting down the plant for a few hours a day or even a few days, uh, so long as we um, we put the same amount of energy into the reservoir, we'll produce the oil um, over uh, the same time period. So we're, we're really resilient to intermediate, in, intermittent power. And also, if you thought about that, maybe um, that provides a base loading for some of these renewables that might be coming on when during off-peak times. And uh, we would be able to shut in our system when the peak happened to provide the, the peak loading and then provide some uh, base loading for some of these renewables. So we can pretty much use uh, um, intermittent power. We can use grid power. Um, we're talking about megawatts of power uh, per well. So it, is a, it is, would be an additional load for the, uh, for the grid, um, but a lot of these oil sands producers have cogen on site. And if you thought about that, and if they had a, a use for electricity right on site, we would um, eliminate transmission losses um, associated with that. So overall, I think it's a good idea for the, for the industry to electrify this way. And I think it's good for the economy as well. And what has been the response so far from uh, the producers? Um, there are, I, on the one hand, they're always looking for new technologies and they invest a fair amount of money in it. And on the other hand, uh, there may not be an industry more conservative than oil and gas when it comes to trying out new things, because if it fails, uh, there's a big penalty. Uh, so how have they, uh, how have they responded? Yeah, um, I would say that pretty much every large and um, medium-sized Canadian oil sands and heavy oil uh, producer is interested in our technology. We have three major oil sands producers 
that ha are funding our commercial pilot at Mar Wayne. Um, they have each provided up to $2 million of funding for the, for the commercial scale pilot. So they are very interested. Uh, obviously, we benefit from their technical expertise as well in terms of oversight of the project. Um, but I would say generally producers that are kind of seeing the writing on the wall in terms of uh, ESG and emissions intensity that you mentioned before. And really look, they are looking for really a portfolio approach to reducing their greenhouse gas emissions intensity. And all of them are looking at other technologies like solvent extraction, um, um, incremental improvements in, in um, SAG-D approaches and um, carbon capture usage and storage. But um, really, I think that electrification is always in the back of their mind as a way to go as well. We know that some of these producers are, are looking at uh, mod small modular nuclear reactors as well as a way to power um, uh, heavy oil sands and heavy oil extraction techniques, but they really need a electrification technology as the actual production vehicle. So I think the interest in the industry is extremely high. And what kind of a timeline are we talking about? When will the demonstration project be completed? When might you be ready for a commercial scale up? We've, uh, we've stated that the initial uh, pilot project will be six months in duration. As I mentioned, we just started up at the beginning of March. Um, so we would go until September. Um, that would give us some initial results so that we could then be um, looking at doing additional installations, maybe multiple well pairs or a whole well pad at some other uh, uh, resource or uh, facility um, in 2023. So that's kind of our, our timing. Um, we think, as you mentioned before, um, oil sands, heavy oil producers are slow to adopt uh, technology, but I think that this time is a little bit different because there's um, you know, there's a finite horizon here, right? And, and there's a real push within this industry to get these uh, emissions intensities down. Yes, it's amazing how uh, the industry can adapt when it's motivated. Exactly, so, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Jeff, thank you very much for this. Really appreciate it. And, and good luck with your, with your uh, demonstration project and with the uh, subsequent uh, adoption. Uh, the electrification of the oil sands uh, sounds like it might solve a lot of problems. And uh, so we'll look forward to seeing uh, how, you, how the technology performs. Yeah, thanks. We'll keep you posted.